Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Rotarian friends, welcome to this breakout session uh, on ICCs and the impact on the Rotary's areas of focus. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you here um, and to guide you through this uh, next hour. I am Paul Jankovic. I am uh, Austrian. I am. Uh, I was a district governor and had many other functions. But uh, today I'm speaking to you as national coordinator for the ICCs of my country. We are um, luckily approaching 20 uh, ICCs now. Uh, the, we have 18 up and running and two in the wings and the pipeline. Um, well, in the next hour, as I said, our team here, the panelists and myself, we will give an overview what ICCs uh, can do in this context. So if you follow me, just to refresh um, our memory, what is an ICC? What is it about? Uh, you all know it, and I'm sure you have seen this slide before. Yeah, there are many ways uh, what you can do in an ICC, but I think the best thing is really to go for projects, to go for uh, uh, global grants and uh, do uh, activities in one of the areas of focus. Now, this is the next refresher. Which are these uh, areas of focus? As you see here, these are the well-known uh, uh, features like promoting peace and disease and water and sanitation and hygiene, etc. What is new is environmentalism as a protection of the environment. And there you will hear a lot in this uh, session. Now, who is going to present that to you? Who is discussing this with you? Who is giving insights and experience and uh, uh, personal ideas? This is the panel, uh, and this is in the sequence of, uh, of also speaking. Uh, we have uh, one friend from Argentina, Carlos Angel Prestipino. We have uh, somebody from Italy, uh, Professor Pierangelo Metrangolo. And we have uh, Samuel uh, Lee Hancock from the United States. And uh, each of these uh, uh, panelists will give a very interesting aspect of ICCs in this context. Now, uh, just to, to uh, cover that, um, I'm sure in the audience are many people who have a lot of experience, who have a lot of ideas and can comment and maybe give us some hints and new uh, ideas. Please do not hesitate, use the chat function and we will answer that or uh, uh, we'll comment uh, on it if time permits at the end of this session. We will run through this uh, session now in one sequence and have the, the discussion and the talks uh, later at the end of it. Now, let me introduce the second speaker. Uh, he's coming from Italy, uh, Pierangelo Metrangolo. He is professor of chemistry at the Politecnico Milano, and he is a member of the Rotary Club Morimondo Abbazia. And he is also chapter chair of uh, the ICC Italy and Finland. And he has uh, prepared a wonderful example of uh, very, very important aspects in uh, environmental protection. Dear Angelo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Paul. So, dear fellow Rotarians, Rotaractors, members of the family of Rotary and friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pierangelo Metrangolo. I'm chairman of the national section of the Italy Finland Intercountry Committee and proud member of the Rotary Club Morimondo Abbazia nearby Milan, Italy. I'm delighted to be here and speaking to this important audience. And basically, what I'm going to present is our activity in the Intercountry Committee Italy Finland and uh, our projects, which are mostly related to protecting the environment. So our environmental project is called U-Green because, uh, as you will see, 
it's time for us to get to action. And before starting this, I wanted first to present where my club is. And actually, my club is in Morimondo, which is a small town around 40 kilometers away from the Milan metropolitan area, as you can see in the map. And it's a beautiful town, especially because we are really facing this beautiful abbey of Morimond, which was built in 1134. And actually, this was built from the Cistercian monks and had a very important role in transforming this land from a series of marches into a very, very fertile farmland. You are most welcome to visit us whenever possible. And the reason why this land is so fertile is because there are uh, so many channels, so there is a lot of water, fresh water coming from these water resurgences. And this water is coming from the far away Alpine glaciers. This was channeled in 1438 by the Lord of Milan, Filippo Maria, Filippo Maria Visconti, for irrigation purposes. And moreover, this made these canals navigable in order to transport goods in Milan. And actually, this was the reason why this uh, land is so fertile and uh, this water coming from the glaciers can be used for irrigation purposes. And we, this is a very nice story to learn from nowadays. So I would like to speak about our intercountry committee, which we created in uh, 2017 with our twin club in Helsinki, Rotary Club in Finlandia Hall, we created this uh, inter-country committee and I'm the national coordinator in Italy and Taru Karikowski is the national coordinator in Finland. So one of the role of inter-country committees is uh, creating new twinnings between clubs and uh, two other twinnings came up soon after for example, in the center of Italy, Rotary Club uh, Porto San Giorgio, with the Porvo uh, town in Finland, and one more, sorry, one more in uh, Cairo, Finland, with Castellammare di Stab in Naples, in the south. Moreover, me, being in the uh, intercountry committee means uh, sharing services together and uh, at the beginning of October, since many years now already, we, from many people from our club and Italy, they reach Helsinki in order to row for saving the herring, the Baltic herring, in a service called Silaka Sotu, which means basically save the Baltic Sea. And this is the Italian team which is ready to row for uh, the Baltic herring but also to exchange traditions and culinary delicious with, uh, for example, cooking together and even doing very important things like, for example, sharing banners with the Environmental Ministry of Finland. And we were quite much inspired by this uh, uh, Silaka Soto service, which starting from a small service became a very important Rotary Action Network by involving this year all the Baltic Sea countries. And there was an important event in February, which was opened also by the president of the Rotary International. So this is a clear demonstration where small services can grow bigger and bigger involving many other countries. So we were quite much inspired by this. And uh, we wanted to do something similar by focusing on something closer to us. And actually, Italy, as you may know, is surrounded by beautiful Alps and many, many Alpine glaciers. So we made a very nice partnership with the Glaciological Service in Lombardy. And um, actually, we were able to support them also to make an expedition into Bolivia in order to check the status of the Chachacomani glacier, which you see which is really disappearing with a lot of consequences for the economy 
of the uh, nearby plains. And this is another important message. If the glacier disappear, obviously troubles will be even very far away, impacting everyday life, uh, for example, in the plains uh, where this uh, water will not arrive anymore. So, but it's important to train also young generation and invest in research, which is what we did by supporting uh, two students, the research of, you, of two students uh, in uh, sustainability research. And uh, these two grants were given by the 2016 Nobel Prize awardee, Sir Fraser Stoddart, which gave these two prizes along with us at this important conference. Also, we took inspiration from our Finnish partner, which started uh, a climate pledge long ago. This climate pledge started in Finnish, was translated into English and many other language, different languages. And we decided to undertake also this climate pledge on a more sustainable lifestyle of every citizen and we translated this into Italian and we are spreading this into Italy. And it would be very good if every country would do the same, spreading the voice that it's important also for us as citizens to behave in a more sustainable manner. And also we recorded with my friend Giuseppe Resnati of my same club, we also recorded an educational course open to citizen for uh, higher education, for meeting the sustainable development goals of the UNESCO. You can uh, download the course and attend it. Also in the course, there is the climate pledge that you can sign. And it was very nice to see that the first sign signature was the one from uh, Sir James Fraser Stoddard, Nobel Prize for Chemistry 2016. So the, the focus now is on glaciers. Alpine glaciers, unfortunately, are shrinking. If you compare the solid blue spots here surrounding the north of Italy, as you can see, compared to the blue lines, they are really become smaller and smaller. And this will impact a lot the water resurgences, which make the Po Plain, the Padana Plain, so fertile. And obviously the consequences will be a lot on agriculture, tourism and security management of water flows. We have to act now, we can still do something. And uh, otherwise, glaciers will disappear in 50 years. Here I'm presenting two examples. On top left, we have the Forni glaciers in Lombardy, which we'll see, we are seeing a projection will disappear. It was the biggest one. It will disappear by 2050. And also the Marmolada glacier is really shrinking in the Dolomites. It's time, it's time now to act and be more sustainable. And uh, we are going to support through the glaciological service of Lombardy, all what all possible to be done to preserve our glaciers. We recorded a video for you, which you are seeing now. So the Morimondo Abbey was founded in 1134 by the Cistercian monks coming from the Morimond Monastery in France, nearby Dijon. And it had a very important role transforming uh, this land from a series of marshes into a very fertile farmland. At the end of the 14th century, for external reasons, the Morimondo Abbey experienced a decline. But meanwhile, Filippo Maria Visconti in the same period wanted to have uh, these canals called Navigli to be built in order to connect Milano to six uh, castles in the surroundings. This involved a tremendous series of hydraulic engineering work, which made these canals navigable and also created a very efficient irrigation system, which allowed to introduce the corn crops and rice pads. 
This demonstrates how investing in infrastructure could develop a land from a series of marches into a very, very wealthy farmland. This is a beautiful example of water resurgences where the water comes off the ground with a reasonable pressure and this comes from the glacier melting in the past and the water is conveyed into channels in order to irrigate the field. Obviously, if the alpine glacier will disappear, this source of water will not be available anymore for food production. What we consider like, like a global phenomenon has actually an effect, a very bad effect on local communities as well, and affects local communities pretty bad. In my experience, uh, I have seen that everything is uh, connected, all the elements are very connected uh, with each other, so uh, big glaciers and, uh, and the mountains are connected to the rivers, and the rivers are connected to the sea and the oceans, Everything is in a very uh, fragile uh, balance. The glaciers that we see, uh, it's a, a giant and very efficient uh, water stock, uh, water storage. And if we lose it, we will not have an, uh, another uh, stock of water during the summer. The uh, fact that we are losing it, it will be a problem for not only for the alpine valleys and the rivers that uh, goes across them, but also for all the Padana Valley and the plains where we have agriculture and farming acti activities, because in the summer period, there, there will be a very uh, higher scarcity of water. If uh, the glaciers disappear, there will be not any more water available for irrigation purposes. So, but we can still try to invert this trend. It's not too late yet. And everybody could do something, even the simple citizen, starting by signing the pledge. We have to take action right now to study better and to uh, do what we can to avoid disasters because even a very slight change can make an avalanche effect and can destroy ecosystems uh, which are may maybe far away from each other in terms of distance, but very, uh, very, very close in creating a community could be the first step and how you make a community. First of all, you ask signatures. First of all, you uh, make people understand the problem. And when you are all together, the impact on politicians and on, you know, on, on this phenomenon can be uh, much, much stronger. Fighting the climate change, it will be the challenge of the next decade. It will be our challenge to try to stop the retreat of the glaciers like this one, because we know from the IPCC climate evolution scenarios that if we don't do anything, we will lose all the glaciers around the Al Italian and uh, all the Alps. Join this online petition and start the change now. If you want to invert this trend, it's not too late. You can contribute joining the Ugreen project and signing the pledge. So, thank you for listening. I hope that we convinced you that it's important to act now. There's no much time left. And we, as Rotarian, also in our Rotarian lifestyle, should always protect the environment. Please join the Ugreen project, visit the website, and sign the pledge. Thank you for listening. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Pierangelo. I think we all agree that this presentation makes us really think, and I hope uh, we will make uh, use of this uh, uh, invitation for this pledge. Couldn't agree more. Right. I just, I just wanted to comment, if possible, Paul, is that Andreas in the chat says that uh, obviously the glacier issue is touching many other countries and this is extremely important it is true every country should pay attention to this because our reserves of fresh waters are really limited 
And uh, why not, for example, inter-country committees are exactly the good tool for involving many countries around, for example, the Alpine Arc, which would be extremely beautiful. And moreover, there is another point I wanted to make. It's our style, a lifestyle that needs to be changed and our Rotarian lifestyle also has to change in order to be more compliant with them, with, uh, with, the, with the protecting environment. It's a kind of new age for impact zero Rotary, which is the big issue that we have ahead.